Hello guys, welcome to our review as read. Today we'll be talking about a Dragonlance novel called The Wayward Knights from the Warriors series volume 7 by Mr. Roland Green. So this book is about Sir Priven the Wayward and um, this is basically the last book in the Warriors series about Sir Priven, about how he has risen from becoming a thief in Ishtar to becoming a knight of the highest order basically. Um, the last book of this series is about him leading his knights who are called wayward knights because they're not the traditional stock of, you know, noblemen and everything. Such as Hawk Brother and is from a tribe of um, basically desert-dwelling nomads and so on. So to this story, the wayward knights is the Priven taking up the mission to clear the island of Suvinari from Wilter the Brown, a wizard who is near godhood because he managed to mix all three colours of magic of red, um, black and white. And of course this also involves, due to the island being a strategic point for both the Minotaurs and the Ishtarians, the human factions, the two races have to work together which in later Dragonlands history these races will come to a head but this is a point where so Priven has always in several stories been about uniting the the races and the different you know nationalities and everything like that to basically prevent a war if possible. And on the side um, story is basically that of his son Garrick who is actually protecting Terrorbot Manor where um, Sir Priven lives against the politics of Ishtar trying to basically remove Sir Priven and his land holdings from him. So basically that's what the story is about so let's first get into the cons of the book. Now the cons of the book is on a very minor point also that you look at this cover you see um, basically there's a dragon here and everything you know just to put it out there you're expecting a dragon in this novel you're not gonna get it so maybe this um, cover design was designed before the book was written or maybe this is tying to some bigger story which I don't know about but basically I always review a book as a standalone. I also have reviewed the Order of the Rose which I'll put a link below. Um, the same thing here um, is that Roland Green he writes a good story overall I'll put it out there right now but the problem is the getting to that part of the book. One issue of that is that most of his book starts really slow. He gives a lot of details and a lot of build up and he he writes very well for focusing on characters but what they're doing in that early part of the books, both for Order of the Rose and The Wayward Knights, is so mundane that you know Unless you're like me who read the review and all that, sometimes you, I feel you might not even get to the good part of the book, which is pretty sad because overall his stories, when you get to the good parts, mix up for all the beginnings, which tend to be a very slow build-up of, of conversations and um, activities which that actually can be cut, such as such small, some things like some weddings and all, which can be described in a few paragraphs, you stretch it, alright? Now there is a good and a bad side. The good side of that is that because of his writing style, you get to know the characters so much more and you feel more invested in them. But at the same time, the activity itself, you just read through it and you just keep thinking, how does this fit into the bigger story? And if the character, you need to know the character, um, couldn't the, uh, the writing style be put into a situation that tied into the story more? And another con of the book is Sir Priven himself, amazingly. Uh, same thing also with the Order of the Rose books and all that. The character of Sir Priven the Wayward is basically the old Dungeons and Dragons trope of the old warrior who's still super great and he's a very honorable man. He's a really still a really good fighter, just not at his peak and all of that. A very one dimensional character basically. I could basically tell you every decision he will make when the situation comes up for Sir Priven. So maybe because he has so much tied to the, the Dragonlands world and history. Um, it seemed that Roland Green, the author, had a lot more fun writing about the side characters. In fact, so much so that, to be honest, most of the book is about the other characters leading and doing basically the more important things. Sir Priven was basically just the guy who tied all the different missions together. You know, so much. If you're reading to find out a lot about Sir Priven, I would not actually read this book. I would actually read the others. Because he doesn't actually appear 
that much in the book. He appears, I mean, in a, a significant amount, but many times he he's not really doing anything. He's basically um, just around the area leading, but more the actions is done by the other knights, such as Sir Darren, so on. And the last point, so Wilter the Brown is um, this magician who almost manages to reach God because he has managed to mix all three colors of magic. And the god, even the gods are out there, man. He manages to keep this one island, Suvenari, as his, um, you know, basically secret lair. Not so secret anymore, but so where he has his most power. All right. And with all that build up of how strong and powerful he is, and he was near Godhood and everything, I can imagine even if you had the past books to read, how much they built him up, for how he, no spoilers, but basically how he basically is dealt with at the end of the novel really is really eye-rolling. You know, that someone so powerful could be taken out in that fashion. I mean, I won't give it, give it away, but, you know, if it weren't for the other characters and all that, it, in fact, this book is very much a character-based novel. Uh, if it weren't for the interesting characters and everything, this book would be a total fall because of that one point, because the entire mission hinges on defeating Wilter. So those are the cons of the book. So let's just get into the pros of the book. So the first pro of the book is Roland Green has um, a good ability in that he writes and he gives you just enough information from the other books and all that you do not need to read the other books to actually enjoy this one book by itself. Even as a standalone, you know, you do fine. Of course, if you know the backstory, like when he mentions the CG was in, in the Order of the Rose, if you know about it, you get a bit more invested. But truth be told, I could read this book by itself and still enjoy it, even if I did not read um, the Order of the Rose. And of course, like the point I pointed out in the cons part, the review, the, the later half of the book and all is, is actually very well written. It's very exciting, very tense. Roland Green writes very good politics, but the politics of actually the planning and like I said before, even the other roles, he writes um, campaigns, like how a mission is carried out on it very well because you feel the tenseness and how, you know, unlike other Dragonlance novels where, you know, knights walk in and they slaughter everybody, you know, there's consequences in his campaigns. Like, he must he be a mili he must read a lot of military books because, you know, casualties abound in his novels, all right, which is very interesting and very nice. It's just unfortunate that the beginning build-up is um, lacking. So, you know, when if you start on this book and you don't get too interested in it, give it a chance and get to that part where they actually start the campaigning because it's really good. And the second thing about his writing style is... That is overall what I feel this whole book's about. Characters. Uh, minus so Priven, maybe he's just a tie-in, but everybody else, Darren and you know, Tovik and all these other characters, Garrick himself even, you know, who are leading these sorties and everything like that, defending the manor. Roland Green is, um, because all the time you see, he, he gives to these different characters, it's a weird writing style because many people, I feel, don't do it that well. In that they can only concentrate on a, basically a few characters, like maybe one or two, or maybe even three characters to make you care about them because of the length that the book has and you only can have that many pages to get you to actually like the character or dislike the character. You actually start to see the character and you get you spend a lot of time with these characters but somehow just enough time not to make it boring. Or the, and by the end of the book, you know, um, you actually feel very invested in certain characters and you know, you probably come up with a few characters that you like or dislike more than the others. In fact, he, you know, strangely, a lot of characters which, um, are some, like from this book, which is a one-off, such as my favorite, which is the one they call the Sean one, which is a Kender priest of Bankala, I think the god is called, all right? He comes in and he's so interesting that he doesn't talk that much, but the, the way he acts and all that, and, you know, I never heard of this god um, and all, but the way he acts and he has a little team and the traditions of the candor and everything just make this character so interesting that you actually, when things happen to these characters, you just feel like, oh, you actually do hope that they don't, you know, have any harm come to them. And the last thing I'll say for the pros is that it's a highly, in terms of a Dungeons and Dragons, Dragonlance novel, realistic um, way of portraying war in a way because many people in the book die and are hurt seriously you know i mean and not just like side characters and everything you know so you know the, the, when you read this book you actually get a sense of um consequences 
you know, like some, and this is in the 90s, this is not the period of Game of Thrones and Martin and all where the characters are being killed left and right. You know, maybe even, and if you think it's just because this is the end of the Supriven series, if you read um, The Order of the Rose, although there's n not as many significant deaths, he actually does um, have it, you see. So his writing style is there and also on top of that like i said he it feels like he wants to write a more adult kind of novel but due to the restrictions of tsr probably that's the reason why but he manages to somehow sneak in these little things like you know the womanly form should we say it's nothing graphic or anything like that but he he manages to sneak it in and also the war how people fight and you know people get hurt in several ways you know he's it's quite descriptive and I like that. It's, you know, it's a realistic way of portraying war and all the situations that come about it. So overall, I enjoyed the book. Like I gotta say, when I read it as a kid, um, The Order of Rose and The Wayward Knights, I didn't enjoy it. But now having read it, um, I would say that overall it's a good book. Like I said, the start is very slow. But basically a good book. Not a great book, but I don't regret reading it. Thank you very much. Till next word.